Hello everybody, I hope you're well. Now today's video is from a contributor to the channel and a supporter, Sensei Vano, who runs a club in Kiev in the Ukraine. Now this was the last video they managed to record before all the troubles happened. Um, we really feel for them, it must be awful that everything's shut down and uh, they're hoping that they can get back to training once everything sorts itself out, but uh, you have to feel for them. It's a very, very difficult situation for them to be in. In this clip, he presents his ideas on Tenkan. He's got some really good ideas about the fundamentals of this uh, critical exercise that we all train pretty much every session. And he's got a, a lovely, relaxed, no-nonsense style of presentation, I think. Now, if you'd like to support them, I've put the link to their channel down below. Um, go over there and subscribe, show them some love, and thank you for watching. Uh, hi, I'm Gudis from Ukraine. Today I would like to talk about the Tenkan a bit. So I demonstrate a few variations of Tenkan and explain my understanding of it. So let's start from the beginning, from the first Tenkan doing mostly in all Aikido dojos I know. So it looks like this. Here, he grab, and I turn. What's the problem with it? The problem is when I move, uh, he could move also. He will not stand and wait, so he'll do uh, anything. And maybe when I move, he start to do something like hitting me or blocking me or whatever. So when I turn, he might move also, like hit with the leg or so on. So what could I do with it? So maybe I make him busy with something. Busy like, uh, like make him move. So I try to make him move and for now I'm safe. Because when he moves, uh, his legs are moving, his hand is far away from me, and he cannot attack me right when I move him. However, when we stop, I had to do next move. And at that moment, he could move also. And if I move, to do, for example, it here, uh, he could attack me with a hand, or with a leg, or whatever. So, uh, what could we do with this? Uh, my intention to make him move constantly until I could finish some technique. It's like this. Of course, I cannot move him forever. I cannot roll him like 10,000 times. So I had to move him and then finish with something. Like, like this and like this. Three basic ideas around moving. The first one, if he stands and I move, so I might lose. Uh, he could counter attack or whatever. If we both moved around some stable uh, point, some stable center, one uh, wing who clever, who understand how to use this center and take opponent. And the third part, when he moves around me, 
around central point that I take. So this one, you will have a time to do some technique. And one more thing I'd like to talk. It's how to do ten count beginning of ten count. So many people start to do ten count by turning the body and making one step. We call it one and half step, and you lose uh, half of your hips turn. So this is a way to lose half of your hips energy. This one. So my intention first move forward and then turn the hips and roll the guy around me. So this one is possible but it could create less energy from the hips. So you move like this or you move like this and then turn. So it's a bit different moves. Even when you do it fast or you do it uh, like fluent, like he walked to me and attacked me. So even in this point, I move forward and then turn. So even so, move forward and then turn. Forward, turn. Not like this. This and this. Okay. Thank you all. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and visit our channel. Bye bye.